In my mind, it was also kind of like a team building. Mm -hmm. So the guys that did go, that we got a lot closer with them, we got to hear the background stories, their reasons for going out there. And um, a lot of times it was a change in perspective. And um, ever since high school, I went on a service trip down to Haiti my senior year. Okay. And since that point, I've always believed that the best way to change someone's mindset is to change their perspective. And um, from that point, Sean started talking about the All Off for Cancer. And obviously, we didn't have that name at the time. Yeah. But um, yeah, he did, it. he did a heck of a job heading that up. But um, with that, as soon as he started talking about it, uh, obviously on the service trip, I mean, I was all for it, yeah. you know. Um, a lot of times with Clemson football and the fact that we just won a national championship, a lot of the guys don't realize the platform that they're blessed with and uh, what people do with their platform in, in order to influence others or affect and impact others. Um, I think that is just as important as how you perform on the field, you know. Um, who you are as a person is just as important as to who you are as a player. So, um, I mean, looking at it from that perspective, Sean's a great guy, and obviously you could see that, the fact that he headed up something like that. Also went on the Haiti trip, and uh, I can definitely say that I look at him like a brother right now. Yeah. Or not right now, but yeah. now in general. Kind of gone through all that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, what, what was the response sort of, of the other guys on the team, you know, when he says, hey, I want to do this, and also, um, you know, I'm going to shave your heads. Is that, you know, is that, is I mean, that cool? So I, mean, I mean, some guys are like, oh, I'm, I'm not shaving my heads, but. I mean, it grows back, <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, not only that, just to see the smile on a lot of the kids' faces, um, it was, I just hope that I had an impact on them as much as they had an impact on me. Yeah. Um, so the little girl that I was with, uh, <laughs> it's funny because we were sitting there, and a lot of times they have to go through treatment, and uh, they're going through a lot of things, and they can't just be normal kids. So to have the opportunity to sit down and uh, talk with a Clemson football player, um, I mean, I guess would be pretty cool, you know, uh, just have them, give them an opportunity to be able to sit down and laugh, not have to think about all the things they have to go through yeah. with the treatment. So I thought I was all for it as soon as you started talking about it. Who was the ugliest after they shaved their heads? That's a great question. Um, I'd say, well, Cade Stewart used to have a mullet. Yeah, thankfully so that's really that an got improvement. Yeah. yeah, so that was an improvement. But uh, no, yeah, Sean didn't look so hot with the beard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it what was uh, awesome. What was the you know get like we getting to see the kids like in that environment? What was that like for you guys? How much did that? You know, Sean said like after the first time he kind of went and visited them like yeah. just the emotional weight of it. No, all yeah, is yeah, so big. absolutely. But absolutely. like getting to kind of see the other side of it of them outside of of you know a treatment environment and actually being able to laugh and have fun and stuff like what's that kind of like for you um i just say it was a blessing the fact that i'm in that position in order to make them laugh yeah and uh that they look up to me and something like that because i honestly just look at myself as a normal college student mm -hmm. and i just happen to play football but um the fact that they were able to come in there a lot of them were shy to begin with and uh, as soon as they opened up and you got to hear their stories it was it was insane to hear the type of stuff that they had to go through and um I mean, I'm just extremely happy that they were able to actually get out and uh, enjoy themselves for a day. Yeah. Did you get to hear from any, you know, parents or anything like that about kind of what what the what the day meant to their kids? Um, a couple of them talked about it afterwards. Um, we took a lot of pictures with them, and uh, I would say it wasn't necessarily what they said, but their facial expressions. Yeah. Because whenever we were on stage and uh, they were cutting our hair, and you could just see. Like, I just kept telling the girl that I was with, I was like, hey, you can make me look as crazy as you want. And she was like, okay. And, uh, I mean, if you're just, just goofing around with them and them being able to see their kids laugh, um, I mean, a lot of them were in the crowd just crying. And uh, they honestly didn't have to say anything. Like, we knew what it meant to. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. Greg, what was your favorite part of the Haiti trip? Favorite part of the Haiti trip? Um, I'd have to say... Okay, so whenever I went in uh, my senior year of high school, uh, I went to a place called Alex's House. And it's an orphanage about 45 minutes to an hour away from Port-au-Prince. But um, I'd say the coolest part was being able to go back and see the orphanage. So talking with Jesse Carroll and Allison and all them, um, they set it up to where I was able to go back 
to the exact same place to see the exact same kids, and this was four years later. And uh, I honestly never thought that I'd been able to be blessed to have that opportunity. But whenever I was there, we were building a foundation for like a halfway house or a transition house. So the kids that would be in middle school or in high school, um, they get to the point to where they're dependent on, uh, on the resources that they're given on a daily basis, on shelter and uh, stuff like that. So the, the transition house was the opportunity for them to move out of that or out of there to where they were supporting themselves like they worked for a living now and they just had a shelter to live so at that point I honestly say it was the coolest part as well as um, just being able to see the change that they've gone through how did you start making this trip to Haiti every year um well I actually haven't gone back since my senior year okay. but whenever I did go uh, I was the only kid or I was the only person like under the age of 35 and whenever I got back, I was like, holy cow, like, people do not understand what we just take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, like whenever I, obviously you could tell your friends about it, but if you think about high schoolers, they're like, oh, okay. And you can have a deep conversation with them, but at the end of the day, they're probably just gonna blow you off just because they didn't experience it themselves. And uh, to be able to go with a bunch of guys my age, it just changed the, uh, changed the trip as a whole. Um, a lot of times, so, it was pretty hot today and uh, like we're all sweating we're out here working and uh, even to this day a lot of us are like hey like stop complaining we know it could be a lot worse we're like, yeah you're right and we just snap out of it so it's also cool to have a reminder um, with the guys around you on a day-to-day -day basis not only that being closer with them as well as uh, all the good that we did do down there in terms of distributing shoes and meals and stuff like that but Hopefully we can go back next year. <laughs> How big is it that Clemson gives you, gives you guys the opportunity to do things like this and helps you grow more? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. So my freshman year when I wasn't on the team yet, um, as soon as I got on the team, all I was thinking was, okay, like I'm a Clemson football player. This is awesome. And um, I didn't realize all the opportunities that I'd be blessed with uh, through Paw Journey. It's been around for almost a year now. And uh, whenever they first came out, they're like, okay, yeah, so we're going to life skills, fifth quarter, which is life after football, and uh, stuff like that. So they can talk about it as much as they want, but you're thinking in the back of your mind, okay, it's just like another networking thing. And that's, that's not the case at all. So I've tried to maximize the PAW journey as much as I could, talking to Jeff Davis all the time, talking to Allison Waymeyers all the time. Um, with them, they actually helped me out with an internship. They enabled me to fulfill a dream that I had ever since my senior year of high school. Like, the opportunities that have come with it, it's absolutely breathtaking. I, it's, it's hard to put to words, I could say that. 